What's going on Reef Builders? I am Jake Adams. Welcome back to another video from the Reef Builder Studio. We've got a very fun one that you can probably surmise from the title. But before we jump into it, I want to let you know that the Reef Therapy podcast is really great gaining traction in the reef aquarium community. My co-host Mark Vanderwall and I discuss a wide range of topics, but very soon we will stop posting the videos on the Reef Builders channel. And these are going to be uh, shared exclusively on the Reef Therapy YouTube channel so make sure to subscribe and engage us on that property um, if you're a fan of the content but now let's get back to some reef builder style video this is the euphilia tank that you may have seen and heard about or read about on reef builders or reef therapy um, this is where almost all of our euphilia style corals are now almost all euphilias fall into a new genus called fimbriophilia uh, the the torch corals are the only ones that are true euphilias but for the sake of clarity, we're just going to call them all Euphilias and Galaxias. So this tank is 30, 36 inches long, 24 inches wide, and about 20 inches tall, about 40 to 50 gallons of Carib Sea Live Rock. And for about one year, I think it's been a little bit more than a year, we've been using the Kessel AP9X over this tank. And this is a dual spotlight form factor. So there's spot, two 90 watt spotlights that shine up this entire aquarium. Um, one of the challenges that I've experienced with lighting this particular aquarium using spotlights is I have to light, I have to mount the light so high in order to kind of even out the lighting intensity from the middle to the edges. So you can see that in the center I have a lot more of the, the light hungry uh, torch corals, uh, Euphilia glabrescens, and then towards the edges I have a lot more of the frog spawns which are typically considered to be lower light. That being said, the entire Euphilia and Galaxia group are in incredibly adaptable. You can grow them in very low uniform lighting and uh, acclimate them all the way up to some of the brightest lights. I've seen uh, wall hammer coral growing in snorkeling depth. So five to six feet or less. Um, so you can see in this particular aquarium, because it's a spotlight form factor, there is a lot of hard shadows. And in some ways it does create a really dramatic contrasty uh, presentation. But on the flip side, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a challenge keeping the corals anywhere in the tank like I'd like. Um, but before we could really dive into hanging some new lights on this tank, we've been developing a brand new uh, mounting bar. So this is a dual bar setup. It's uh, attached to the wall with some toggle bolts. And then to prevent any kind of sagging, as we start adding weight to these bars, we've added a couple suspension wires to support both sides of the mounting arm. So this is going to be a really fun video comparing literally apples to oranges. And it's not, I really don't want you to walk away from this like a good or better or best uh, lighting setup. It's just really opposite ends of the spectrum. So this is a you know, spotlight form factor. There's two spotlights in here and we're going to be hanging the Neptune sky over this tank. Um, and that's basically the diametric opposite of what this is presenting. I could tell you one thing. It doesn't matter whether I had the sky and went to the AP9X or had the AP9X and went to the sky. I hate all new lights when I first hang them over the tank. Um, you get so used to how your tank looks. It literally, I mean, it could look amazing, but in my mind, uh, just not going to feel that connection to it as I would um, until the tank's been running for like two weeks, a month, two months. Then I get really used to um, how the tank is illuminated. All right, since I know you guys love data and it's not enough to just kind of point and say, oh, it's brighter here and dimmer there, I'm gonna take two sets of PAR measurements with the Kessel AP9X. So right now it's kind of running at the program desired spectrum on this particular aquarium. So I'm gonna take a PAR measurement that way. And then I'm gonna set the Kessel AP9X to full intensity and take some more PAR measurements throughout the tank. And we're just gonna write those on the glass. And then after we put the Neptune sky on, to, on the tank, um, we'll be able to compare you know, the lighting intensity and the distribution throughout the entire aquarium. Um, I'm, I mean, you don't need to do these measurements to know it's gonna be a really different dramatic distribution of PAR intensity throughout the tank between the AP9X and the Neptune sky. But let's go ahead and take those measurements and then we'll get the sky up and uh, see how they compare.
All right, so as you can see, the color looks very different because we took some PAR measurements before and after. So when it was like mostly blue due to the programming that we had set for the spectrum, and now it's uh, all levels 100%, so using that tuna blue to get the even balance of blue and white, and then the violet, red, and green channels all at 100%. And you know what surprised me the most, um, actually before I get into that, is that you know, anytime you're taking PAR measurements, you want to turn off the water flow um, because the ripples will cause the lighting intensity to jump and dip and jump and dip and so you know you want to uh, get a nice reliable accurate reading um, and two we're using the uh, Apogee MQ510 which has the immersion coefficient built in so we can trust the numbers that come out of it so what really surprised me about the, the before and after part numbers is I really thought that setting it to more white with all the channels on would really dramatically imp increase the par of this particular light. But the Tuna Blue uh, system, the technology that they use, redistributes the power to what you're setting it at. Right at the top, right here in the center, just underneath the water surface, it was 370 to 400 micromoles of par. Um, we took a reading right here behind the Galaxia, and it was 135 uh, all blue and 150 micromoles when we set it to daylight spectrum. Uh, we took a measurement right here, kind of in this open spot, and it almost didn't change. It was about 205 to 200 micromoles before and after. Um, let's see, right here, way down at the bottom, we went from 115 to 132 micromoles. Um, again, didn't change very much. Um, this was 125 before and 145 in daylight. Um, one of the measurements here in blue was right, we stuck the sensor right between the polyps, is a 250 micromoles blue, 270 micromoles white, but you can see there's definitely like a hot spot where the red was concentrated on this coral. So here we got a, just a very localized reading of 360 micromoles. Your corals won't really experience that because of the ripples, right? This is just us flattening out everything and kind of boosting the potential for a spotlight to be super localized. Um, another measurement is right here on this rock. We went from 260 to 300 micromoles. So you can see there's definitely a cone of light, you know, kind of right where the, underneath the spotlights. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, this one right here is 260 to 300 micromoles. And right here in the corner, it went from 110 to 125. So, you know, overall, I was actually quite surprised, learned something that whether you set it to blue or daylight, the par in intensity from this light um, was within five to 10%, depending on where we were making that measurement. So now we've got that data and the metrics out of the way. We're gonna turn the flow back on, mount the sky on top of the tank. And um, this will be the first time that I see it over my core. I've seen the sky on other tanks, but it's the first time I'm gonna see it on my coral, so I'm pretty excited to get over the tank. So we're gonna jump into that box and we'll come back to you when the light is up. All right, so this is the inaugural light hanging from our new mounting bar. And uh, so we took a very you know, great care to get the light really centered. And since this light is compatible with the Radeon mounting system, we mounted it at the exact same height as the XR15 is on this side. Um, so we measured it as well, and it's straight nine inches off the surface. We've had the light on for about an hour, and I've just been looking at the tank and just kind of trying to see all the differences between this light and the previous light. And like I said, before. This is a 24 by 36 inch tank, um, but I went and looked up there was suggested dimensions and it was 24 by 30 inch. So this tank is just a little bit longer than what's recommended for a, a single fixture. I gotta say, I, I'm color me impressed. The spectrum overall is really well in line with the preferences of modern reef aquarists. You know, we're, we're definitely getting a lot more light shining on the back and towards the front and in the bottom ends and kind of a lower light um, to the left and right. So the AP9X was throwing the light sideways or you know long ways more than it was sideways. Um, but this is this light is looking pretty freaking good. Um, we've currently got it set with the purple, blue, and accessory colors. So the accessories being the PC Amber and the Cyan, those are all 100%. 
and the white channel is currently set to 30%. Uh, but for the testing, we did something similar as the AP9X, where we s picked a colorful spectrum, so just took the whites down all the way, and then we took another measurement with the, all channels at 100%. So top, top row is the AP9X, bottom row is the Neptune Sky, first row is a arbitrary colorful spectrum, and then the second row, is second column, is gonna be a full intensity. So one of the most striking things here is right at the surface in the center of the tank, um, we pretty much got a doubling of PAR values at 800 and 850 micromoles. Um, back here, kind of behind this crazy galaxia, uh, we also got to notice a big increase from 135 to 215, and at full intensity, we had 245 micromoles. Um, now this is where the light already starts to drop off, right at the end of this stick. Um, we went from 205 to 180. So that's one demonstration of how the AP9X um, throws light uh, side to side more than it does front to back. So that went from 205 to 180 micromoles for the color, 200 to 215 micromoles for the full intensity. Now with the overlapping LEDs, um, as we went down a little bit in the water surface, like right here in between all these torches, um, kind of, you know, a good increase in par from 250 to 370 micromoles on the color, and then 270 to 495 um, at full intensity. Right in front of this rock, the color spectrum was 260 in the AP9X, went to 308 uh, micromoles with the Neptune sky, um, but the full intensity was right about the same at about 300 for both right on this spot. Now in the corners, this is something I really expected, um, a lot more light because you have a big diffused panel. We went from 110 to 170 micromoles for color channels, and then at full intensity, it almost doubled from 125 to 209 micromoles. Um, similar story here, we went from 125 to 210 micromoles on the color, 145 to 265 on the uh, full intensity. Let me get that light back up. Wake up, wake up. And then last but not least, right in front of these hammers, we went from 115 to 195 for the color channels, 132 to 240 micromoles at full intensity. So, I know that's a lot of numbers to take in, but with the glory of YouTube and you know on-demand video, you can pause it, take a look at these numbers. Um, the, the, the gist of it is that there's definitely a lot more intensity at the top, a lot more intensity at the bottom sides, um, but there's a lot more drop off here on the edges. The color is really good. Even at full intensity, even backing off the whites like 50%, um, even taking it all, all the way. So I'm already enjoying this light a lot more than I thought I was. It's like a, you know, it's like a, a organ donor. You know, a lot of times you get a, a brand new light and it's so different. You just, you just reject it. You don't want it. This is not bad. Um, Clearly there's a dimension that is lost because there's almost no shimmer, like virtually none. Um, the one thing that kind of surprised me is, you know, this light was designed with a light mixing chamber and a diffuser, but when you look at the surface, you still see all the colors really isolated. So I'm not, I'm really not convinced that that light mixing chamber is anything more than a gimmick until someone demonstrates with and without that color mixing chamber. Um, what I'll say about the light, you know, it was a really easy setup. The install was super smooth. These lights are actually priced exactly the same at $869. Uh, designed, we, we, I looked it up for a 24 by 30 inch uh, dimension, just for one light fixture. You know, those uh, recommendations really tend to change once you have more light that start to overlap with their cones of light. Um, but this is a 24 by 36 inch tank, so just a little bit larger, a bit longer than what's recommended for this light fixture. But I wanted to take these PAR measurements at the recommended height, um, just you know, as if it were mounted to a Radeon mounting system. Um, but I feel like, you know, I'm gonna run it this way for maybe like a week or something. I feel like in the future, I'm gonna raise it up a little bit and then tilt it back a little bit more just to keep some of the light from shining off the glass. The first thing I want you to take away from this video is that this 
comparison was never trying to identify what's better or worse for your particular aquarium. We just wanted to take a look and scrutinize the different properties of having a fixture with two spotlights like the AP9X or a fixture with a flat panel light field like the Neptune Sky. I'm actually really pleasantly surprised at how much I don't dislike that flat coloration. I'm getting really great intensity all throughout the tank. Um, there's still kind of a cone of light. Um, two things that really kind of surprised me about the light. Um, one, the color is just, it's really on point. It's really aligned with the preferences of modern reef aquarists. But two, this is not the magical hyper flat field of light that the marketing would have, would lead you to believe. Granted, once you start doubling up the fixtures, you're probably gonna see a little bit more of that real uniform light intensity across your entire tank. So um, I know this is a lot of numbers to take in in a video format, um, but we will have an article on Reef Builders summarizing most of these PAR values throughout the aquarium, um, and the link will be in the description or in the comments below. So if you have any questions about measuring PAR, AP9X, the Neptune Sky, you've, or Euphilias, now's a great time to get those in the comments below this video. Make sure to like, share, and especially subscribe because once this light is on the tank for a little while I'll be sure to do a full-on review video of this light so it's been fun getting this light over this tank I think it's a perfect um, test bed for what the Neptune Sky can do so thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you guys on another one very soon